Kadosh Boker Tov, Mesechet Yevamot, Daf Hei Amud Aleph, 5A1. Yesterday we were talking about, shh, yesterday we were talking about the entire concept of Semer Ufishtim. Okay, we were talking about a positive commandment pushing off a negative commandment. So now the Gemara is going to come and the Gemara is going to say the following. The Gemara says, so the Gemara says now like this This is all good according to Tana Devei Bishmael that he holds that Stam Beged in the Torah is Semeru Pishtim and since he holds that Stam Beged in the Torah is Semeru Pishtim so therefore he comes and he says right that he's able to say that Semeru Pishtim Yachtav is extra Right, and since Semen of Ishtim Yachtav is extra in Devarim, so therefore, what happens is, is that, yeah, all of a sudden, what happens is, what happens is, is that all of a sudden, right, he comes and he says, since it's extra, you can learn something from it. But he says, but according to the Rabbanan, the Rabbanan argue on Tanat of Ishmael, and they hold that Stam Begin in the Torah is loved of God Semen of Ishtim, means Begin in the Torah could mean anything. It could be anything. It's not just stam dafka one thing, right? So he says, menalehu. How do we know that an ase is doche alota ase? Right? One more time, because I see that a few people are very distracted, right? Okay, so so let me. So the Gemara right now is going back on what we learned yesterday. We learned yesterday. That an ase is doche a lotase. A positive commandment pushes off a lotase. That's why we needed the word alecha by achot ishto. Because if not, I would have thought that since the achot ishto is doing yibum, so it should be permitted, right, to do the yibum. Because an ase is doche lotase. So he says, no, it does not permit it. Why? Because it says by yibum alecha and it says by this alecha. So therefore, we learn from there that no, that if filu bimkom mitzvah, we do not do yibum when it's going to be pogea ba'arayot, when it's going to be confronted with arayot, with the moral relations. The Gemara asks, how do we know the concept that a positive commandment pushes off a negative commandment? So the Gemara answer to do with lotid basha'anez, right? You're not supposed to wear sha'anez, semen of ishim, right, sorry. It says in the Torah, right? Lotid bash kilaim, right? You're not allowed to have kilaim. And then it says, that the next pasuk says, What does it mean? That you're going to come and you're going to put tzitzit, even though it comes and it says that you're not going to put on kilayim. So therefore we learn from there, the fact that there's simuchim, and we spoke about simuchim, whether it's in all the Torah kula or only separate devarim, right? right? But we come and we said that what happens is from there we learn that you're allowed to put on tzitzit, we're allowed to put chatnez. Why? Since the pasuk there says that you're not allowed to wear shatnez, but the pasuk immediately afterwards says that you are, you have to put on the tzitzit. So therefore we came and we said, you're an ase is doche alotase. So we started asking, but one second, how do we learn that from there? There has to be mufne and muchach. Muchach means it's implied, it has to be like it's implied. And mufne means that it's panui, it's, it's free. It's extra, it's superfluous in order for us to actually come and make this drasha. So he said it's muchach because if you wanted to do something, learn in parashat tzitzit. Where's parashat tzitzit? In shelach, right? In the aftara, right? In the maftir of parashat shelach, you have parashat tzitzit. That's what we read every yeah. single morning. That's shelach. I remember in the Torah, right? It's completely out of order. Because parashat tzitzit is first in shelach, right? Then you have, right? No, maftir. Now the Gemara is going to say, Tenach the Tenet of Ishmael, but according to Rabbanan, how do we know? Now we actually went through the Pasuk, right? When we talked about the Tzitzit, right? About over there, when it says, Lot in Basha Nez, Semen of Ishim Yachtav, and we said that the Semen of Ishim, right, was extra, okay? So therefore the question is now, according to the Rabbis, where do we learn, one more time, according to the Rabbis, where do we learn, okay, that you're allowed to do that a positive commandment pushes off a negative commandment. So answers the Gemara, nafka lehu, they learn it from Rosho. What does it mean Rosho? Right? Pay attention. The Pasukim Vayikra. 
Yeah, it's not the Varim, but it's still Vayikra. Yeah, it's still Bible. The Torah says, Vayyava Yom HaShvi'i. And it was on the seventh day. So it says there on the seventh day, you're going to have to come. This is talking about the mitzvah when he has the purification process. Remember, we completely right take off all his hair. We remove all his hair. So what type of hair? We have se'ar, right? Se'aro, right? Which se'aro? Which hair? Rosho, zekano, kabotenav, bekol se'aro yigalech, everything, right? So says the Gemara, the Tanya, we learned in the Braita, Rosho, Matal Mulomad, what does it mean when it's coming to teach you Rosho? Yeah, what is it coming to teach us exactly when it says Rosho? So it says, Lefish and Neymar, since it says in a Pasuk, Lo takifu pe'at roshechem, that you're not allowed to be makif pe'at roshechem. What does that mean? We know that we have an Isur to take off our peot. Okay? It doesn't mean that the peot have to be like this, right? But we have an Isur to remove the peot, right? This is called the peot area. We have an isur to remove the peot area. So it says, So So I would have thought to say, listen, if it's a negative commandment, and the Torah says we are not allowed to remove the peot, so therefore I would have thought to say that also you're not allowed to remove the peot even for a mitzorah. Tamulumar rosho. This comes to teach you rosho. What does that mean? The mitzvat ase, the positive commandment of taking off the hair of a mitzorah, pushes off the negative commandment of that you're not allowed to remove, right, the, the hair of the pill. And since the positive pushes off the negative, so therefore you're going to completely take off all of his hair, including the pill. You're taking off mamash. You're, you're, you're shaving. You're making completely bald. Okay? So says the Gemara. Okay, so now that we just explain, so says the Gemara, the Gemara, hakafat kol harosh, Shema Kafa. Now, obviously, right, when we need to teach this halacha, that the mitzvah of the giluach, the mitzvah of taking off the hair, is going to push off, right, the yisud of akafat peat arosh. Obviously, it says over here, this Tana holds that akafat kol harosh is called hakafa as well, right? Why? Because I would have thought to say that there's only an yisud if you left all the hair, right? Which some people do, they leave all the hair. And then the peot, they remove them. I would have thought that that's an isu. But if you're already coming and you're taking off all the hair, I would have thought to say there's no isu because you took everything off, right? Somebody that comes, right? And we have people like that in the Beit Knesset. They come and they shave off all the hair, okay? So when they shave off all the hair, I would have thought to say that in that case, it's not lota kifu, lota kifu, la kif. What does that mean? Peatro shechem al takifuto. How do you do la kifuto? That I'm taking... Right, this I'm leaving like this, and I'm only taking off the peot. So if you only take off the peot and you leave everything off, that's no takifu patro shechem. The Gemara says, no. Here, this Tana holds hakafat kol harosh is also called hakafa, which means even though you're taking off everything from your head, everything, it's still considered no takifu patro shechem. Yes, and it's still considered hakafat harosh. Which one? Yes, 100%. 100%. Says the Gemara now, one second. Right, because from here, we are going to learn, right, the Binyan Av to everything else, right, to all the mitzvot that are positive, pushes off negative. Remember, what's a Binyan Av? We only just taught you in one case. According to Tanad Vir Bishmael, they learned it from Tzitzit and Kilain. According to Chachamim, he learns it from Mitzorah. And lotakifu patro shechem, taking off the pelt. But that becomes a binyan av. Binyan av means it becomes the building block, the foundation for any other mitzvah that a positive commandment pushes off a negative commandment. But now we're going to try to push it off. We're going to try to defer it. How are we going to try to push it off? Says the Gemara, Ika lamifrach. We're going to ask the following question. Ma le lav de akafa sheken lav she'en shave bakol. The lav of the akafa does not apply to everybody, right? What does that mean? If you look in the in the footnote, the Mishnah Kiddushin Kavtet Amudalef says, right, all the mitzvot lotase, women and men are obligated, meaning negative commandments, not positive. It's positive commandments. If it's a mitzvot, it says the man grama, obviously women are not commanded. Only thing is, can they do it and make a bracha and so on and so forth? That's another machlok, right? The shitat, you know, the, we have the Rav Chida, the this, that, okay, fine. Now, what happens is as follows. Here, what about negative commandments? 
So negative commandments, men and women are always equal, except for these three. What are the three? Bal takif, the Yisur of Akavat Rosh. So women, no problem of Akavat Rosh. Number two, Bal Tashrit. What's Bal Tashrit? The Giluach of the Zagan, the Zakan, right? The Ta'ar of the Zakan. And you're going to take a razor, right? And I'm going to remove, right, the beard. That's called Bal Tashrit. You're destroying your beard, right? And, right, yes. And the, okay? So therefore, usually it's the lifting cuts, which are problematic. And others as well, that it's mamash, it's a razor. So therefore, you have Bal Tashrit, you have Bal Takif, the Peot, and then Bal Tetame Lametim, the Yisur of Kohanim, to become a Tamemet. Did you ever realize the wife of a Kohen has no Yisur of becoming Tamemet? It is only the Kohen himself, not the wife of a Kohen. Not the Kohen. wife of a Kohen, the wife of a Kohen, she is a Kohen. Kohen. Yeah, Kohen. but Kohen. she does not have the Yisur of Tamemet. Okay, she doesn't have the issue. She's allowed to come and contaminate herself to become to Mehmet. Okay, so now the Gemara comes and says, over there it brings it from the Mekor. So this love of a Chotisha is said whether it's for a man or a woman. What does it mean for a man or a woman? Just like a man cannot have relations with his sister-in-law, a Chotishto, so too the sister-in-law is prohibited for having relations to the brother-in-law. Meaning it's not just a one-way street. The Isur works both ways. Just like there's an issue for him to be with her, there's an issue for her to be with him. Okay? And that is also by all the arayot. All the arayot, even though all of them are written in yeah. Lashon Zahar, lo, lo, right, lo, lo tikach, do not take. Right? But since it also says, it's written Lashon Rabim, it's whether it's on the man or the woman. So it comes out that by all these things, a woman cannot come and say, you know what, no, but I'm not commanded. No, 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 you are commanded. From the fact that you came and you did this prohibition, it's karet on both of them. It's not just a one-way street, not just on the man. So here, what the Gemara is going to ask is, how can you come and learn and from there, we want to learn it from every single case. The case that you brought me down as a proof of an ase is does not help. Why doesn't it help? He says for a very, very simple reason. He says, because what's happening is, is that this is Surah Balta Kifu, right? Kifu only applies to men. It does not apply to women. So since it does not apply to women, you cannot come and start applying it at any time that it says, uh, anase, that I say is going to push off the Lota Ase. So it says the Gemara, you're right. Ela'atia nizikano. But rather the Ase is Doche Lota Ase. We learn it Right from Shari Surim, we learn it from the Zikano, not from Se'aro, but rather from Zikano. What does that mean? Because there we start, I said one more time, I'm going to repeat the Pasuk. The Pasuk there said, Okay, so he says that from Zikano. The Tanya we learned in the writer, Zikano, Matamulomar. Why do we need, right, to teach us with Zikano? Right after Vet Zikano, it says, Right again, the pasuk says, Right, et rosho vet zekano vet gabot enav vet kol searo yegalach. So he says one second. If you just tell, tell me at the beginning, yegalach et kol searo rosho was b'fim. I understand now that rosho had to be written to teach you about the peot. But what about zekano? So he says, Mata mulomar zekano. He says, Lefish neimar. Since it's written by the koanim. Now here, it's not only written by Kohanim, it's written by everybody. But it was an extra thing by Kohanim, because by Kohanim, right, there was something extra by Kohanim who was written in a different language, about like the destruction by it. It says by the Kohanim, Ufad zekanam lo Shomea ani af Kohen Mitzura ken. I would have thought to say that also a Kohen Mitzura, right, that he's going to also do Tiglachat. But remember, now if the Kohen becomes a Mitzura, he also has to shave off all his hair, right? So I would have thought to say that the Mitzura would be Right, that means even though it's a mitzvah, it's a sur legalech pat zekano on the zakan. Remember, on the zakan, you have five different points mm -hmm. which are prohibited, right, that you're not allowed to shave. Okay, so therefore, I would have thought to say that it's going to be a sur, right? Tamul Omar comes to teach you zekano. What does it mean, zekano? Zekano comes to teach you that a kohen mitzura, there's a mitzvah legalech, even zekano, because the mitzvah tiklachat 
pushes off the negative commandment, the mitzvah lo taseh, of the giluah chazakan by the kohadim. So since I learned that, so now it applies to everybody. Im enu inyan lelav shen shavei bakol, now, since this milah is not, the, the lotas is not shave for everybody, right? Because we already learned that from Rosho, right? So, which means like this. I told you there were three mitzvot, which are negative commandments, which women are not commanded. Usually women are commanded on every negative commandment. On the positive commandments, it all depends whether it's time bound or not time bound. Okay? But, But, right, when we're talking about a negative commandment, all the negative commandments, the women are obligated except for three. What were the three? The tamimetim, zikanam, and the rosham, right? Anything to do with shaving, the kids, right? Which is basically the shaving of the beer, right? And the peot. So now, according to this, says the Gemara like this. We already learned from Rosho, right, that the ase is dochel lotase, correct? A positive commandment pushes off the negative commandment. He has a mitzvah as a positive commandment to completely go bald. Everything, no hair, not the eyebrows, nothing. Mamash, gabot, gabot, enough, katu. Everything, right? Mitzvah, when he becomes pure, yeah? So I would have thought the same that he does not do the pelt. It's a negative commandment. So he says, no, the positive commandment, tiglach, pushes off the negative commandment. Ah, do a binyan av to all the other mitzvot. It's not shave bakol. So he says, fine. But then where do you learn it from? Zikano. Because Zikano, you have the same shakta vataria. Zikano, which is now the beard, you have the same thing, right? I would have thought to say that he doesn't shave the beard because it's prohibited. No, the positive commandment pushes off the negative commandment. And from there, we want to learn a binyan out to everything else. Ah, it's not shave bakol. Yeah, but I already learned by the peot that it's not shave bakol and still it applies. So now why did I bring Zikano? So Zikano comes to teach you other things as well. What does it mean other things as well? But also that there's not going to be a problem, okay? So says the Gemara, I still need it. Why do I still need it? I would have thought the same. Because the Koanin that there's a I would have thought to say that since the Torah gives more mitzvot to the Koanin, yeah, yeah, that he gives them right to the Koanin. So therefore, since the Koan has extra mitzvot, mitzvot yeterot, to sanctify them. So even when it's going to be a love, she'en shave bakol, it's not going to come and it's not going to push it off. Okay? So he comes and he says, Sabi a chumra by the, the lavin which are said by the Kohanim. So he says, Kamash Malan comes to the Kano, to the that it does push it off. That the mitzvah tiglachat pushes off the Yisur of Giluch Pelat Zekanam even by the Kohanim. So for, since the Kano, I need it to teach you that even though it's going to be love, she'en shave bakol, but it's to do with the Kohanim. So for now, I can't use it anymore for the binyan av for every case. The you have an ase, which is duche, a lot ase. So says the Gimara, okay, fine, you're right. What do we say from there? We want, Ela atya merosho tehachtana. We learn it from rosho, right? Also from the Metzora. Tetanya, because we learned in a brighter. Rosho, Matam, what does it come to teach you when it says, Yegalache kol searo? Right? Rosho, Yegalache kol searo. So he says, Lefish Nemar, Ta'ar lo ya'avor rosho. By the Nazir, it says that you cannot come and put a Ta'ar. So Shomea ni af mitzora ve Nazir ken. So I would have understood that the Nazir is the same as the mitzora, right? Which is going to be prohibited. Tamulomar comes to teach you rosho. What does it mean, rosho? It comes to teach you that even a mitzora Nazir is also going to be Megalachim Nazir. So here you have two things. You have a person that's a mitzvah, and he's also a nazir. By the nazir, it says mitzvah, ta'ar lo yavor rosho. Okay? So therefore, what happens here is that here, because of the mitzvah aseh, of tiglachat by mitzvah, it's going to push it off the, 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 also by the ta'ar of the nazir. So says the Gimara, ikal mifrach, male nazir mitzvah, sheken yeshno b'she'ela. He says, one second. Don't bring me a proof by a Nazir, a nazir Mitzura. Why? Because by Mitzura, right, Kaddish has nothing to do. The person has the infection or he doesn't have the infection. Right? Not, but by a Nazir, he could be do, he could do Shela. He could ask, he could ask to be the Atarat Nidarim and get rid of the Nazirut. Right? So therefore, he comes and he says, since he could come to the Chacham 
and he could go against the Niziru to basically annul the Niziru from the beginning. So for since the Yisur Giluach Sar Rosh of Nazid, you could, you could permit it, you could get rid of it, you could annul it through the Chacham. So therefore we come and we say, so if it's going to be pushed off by a positive commandment, we can't learn that by other Yisurim that you cannot push it off by a Chacham. So says the Gimera, Dilo Te Mahachi, as if we're not going to say this, had the Kaimala, that which we just learned, the Ena said, Dochelo Taase Vaase. We know when do we say that an Ase is Dochelo Taase? Only when you have a positive going against the negative. But what happens if you have a positive against a positive and a negative? Right? So do we say that or not? Right? So he says, We don't say that. En Ase Dochelo Taase Vaase. A positive commandment cannot push off a positive and the negative commandment together. Okay? So says the Gimara, so Ligmar mi Nazir. So why don't we just learn from Nazir? Why? A Nazir Mitzorah, here you have a positive commandment, right? And then you have a negative and a positive commandment. Because the Mitzvah, Tiglacha Mitzorah, is a positive commandment. You want to be Doche, the Yisur of Giluach Rosho, and the Giluach of Rosh Nazir, which also, right, is because of, which is a negative because of Talu Yavor Rosho, but it's also a positive commandment. What's the positive commandment by the Nazir? Kadosh ye gadel pera se'ar rosho. In Parashat Naso, when it speaks about the Nazir, right? We learn from there, Kadosh ye, he becomes holy. And how? Gadel pera, he has to grow his hair. So it's a positive commandment and a negative commandment by the Nazir. Yes, there's a positive commandment to let his hair grow. And there's a negative commandment that he cannot put a ta'ar lo yavor rosho. So since, so if you have a positive commandment by Mitzorah, the positive commandment by Mitzorah cannot annul, cannot override a positive and a negative. And here you have a positive and negative. But rather, so why can't we learn it in Bemet from Nazir? Because you could ask, you could annul it through going to a rabbi. Remember, by a Nazir, you go to the rabbi, the rabbi finds a heter, an opening, right? And once he finds an opening, he annuls the Nazirut. Uh, you're not a Nazir. Why? Why? Because you went to the rabbi and you got an annulled. Hachanami, so to hear, when we're talking about the Lota Aseh by Yadar Yisurim, which is going to be pushed off that we find by the Nazir Mitzurah, we could also ask the same exact question. Shekeni Yishno B'Shela. You could come, you could annul it. How? By asking the rabbi. Right? And then that's it. You annulled it. So now the Gemara accepts the question. And therefore it goes back to the concept of Aseh. Right? Is Doche Lota Aseh from the Tiglach at the not from the Nazir Mitzvah, but from the Mitzvah. Ela leolam, but rather, Hiamutet, go to 5b, right? Right, but rather, Nikra Kama, you're right. Ase is Dochelot Ase, we learn it from the first Pasuk. What was the first Pasuk? From the Tzitzit and the Sha'anes. So even according to Chachamim, we are going back to the original Pasuk. What was the original Pasuk? When it says, right, Gidilim Ta'aselach, Lotit Ba'Sha'anes, Sebe Vishitim Yachtav, so we said that you have to make tzitzit, and then you're in the Lord Bashanes. So therefore, says the Gimana, one second, in Ken, right, why? Now, we had a question that according to Chachamim, that they argue on Tanat Ishmael, there's nothing extra. So if there's nothing extra, we don't, we're not Doresh Simuchim, right? How do we know we're Doresh Simuchim? We said, Simuchim la leola nasuim, em yashar pedud, right? So, so Simuchim is written in Furash. We say it every single Shabbat Mincha. Right? We say it in Tehilim. So therefore, Simuchim la'ad le'olam. When we say Simuchim, we are Doresh Simuchim. But now, where are we Doresh Simuchim? When we say, when it's Muchach, plus it's Mufne. Muchach means it's Muchach, that it's, it's like, it's like, it's like uh, inferred, that that's the way that it's supposed to be. And it's Mufne, it's Panui to do that. Here, it's not Panui. So he says, why is it not Panui? Because if you remember, we said that Semen of Ishtim, right, according to the Chachamim, we mean it's Semen of Ishtim. Because Beged is any type of a clothing. Not like Tanad Rishmen. Tanad Rishmen, Beged, is Rak Beged Semen of Ishtim. So here when it says, Lotil Bashanes Semen of Ishtim, I already knew that. Right? So therefore he comes and he says in Ken, and so, Le Makra, the Pasuk should have said, Tzitzit Ta'aselecha. Instead of saying, Gedilim Ta'aselecha, it should have said, Tzitzit Ta'aselecha. Gedilim Lamali. Why does it teach you Gedilim and not Tzitzit? So Shema Mina What does it mean Lafnuye? It's extra for a dirasha. 
and since it's extra for a dirasha, yedilim is also like the tzitzit, okay? But it's coming to teach you that the ase is going to be the duche, the lo tase of sha'anes, okay? So, 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 so gimara, yeah, the gimara is now going to ask against this. What do we just say? We just said the gedilim was extra. And since gedilim was extra, it's mufne, it's empty, it's, it's, it's extra to teach the salacha by the mitzorah. Uh, by sorry, by the tzitzit. Okay, says the Gemara. Highly shiur So what are you talking about? It's not extra. I need it for the shiur. Why? The word gedilim is teaching us how many chutim do you need for the tzitzit. So it's not extra in order for you to do a derasha. Why? Because it says like this: gedil is already mash mashnai. Okay, when it says gedil, it's already two chutim because gedil has to be srigao kliya. It's like when you're braiding something, when you're putting two things together, that's called gedil. So the fact that you already told me gedil, it's not just one thread. It has to be intertwined. It has to be already minimum two. Gedilin, from the fact that it says in plural, so if I just told you gedil equals two, so gedilim in plural equals four. Right, so it's four, okay? Now, he comes and he says, v'natinu al tzitzi takanaf peti. So it's mashma over here, that with the tzitzit, you have petilim, which means chutim kruim. So it comes out that ase gedil from four chutim, upotlehu mitocho. When it says that kanaf petil techelet, you have to be potel. What does it mean here, potel? You have to make it that at the end of the gedil, it has to be petilim kruim, which means that you cannot make it such so long, but you have to make it a little bit a gedil, and a little bit, it has to be chutim kruim. Right? That's what we have at the top of the tzitziot. You have all the braids, all the things. And at the end, it's all long, separate right, bra- uh, strands. So he says, so you see from here that the entire concept of gedilim is teaching us how many strings that you need. Right? The entire concept. So he says, one second, so if it's like that, so therefore gedilim is not extra. Now that I just told you gedilim is not extra, so therefore you can't learn anything from it. You can't learn that it says doche lotase because there's no mufne anymore. So says the Gemara in Keneso, Leima Kra, the Pasuk Shur says, Lo tilba sha'anes, semenu fishtim, nekuda. No. Yeah, one more time. Lo tilba sha'anes, semenu fishtim, nekuda. Stop. Yachdav lamali. Why do we need the word yachdav? Stop after semenu fishtim. Lo tilba sha'anes, semenu fishtim. What is yachdav? So he says, Shema mina. So therefore, when it says the word Yachdav, even without the word Yachdav, you already knew that it meant Yachdav. Right? You already know that. When I tell you, don't put on Shane Semir Fishtim, it means Semir with Fishtim. You know that. So why do I have Yachdav? Yachdav is extra. Since Yachdav is extra, it's left new year. So says the Gemara, that's also incorrect. Why is that incorrect? Vakati mi baile le tochef shte techipot chibur utchifa achat eno chibur. He comes and he says, it's also not true. Why? I need the word yachdav together to teach you. What happens if you take a beged and you're going to be tofer, a beged semir, to a beged pishtim, only with two techivot of the machat? That means I didn't completely sew it together. I took the, the needle, right? And I, I sewed two, only two. Shte techivot of machat atfira. So therefore he says it's considered a chibut for shatnes. Right? Now he comes and he says, but if you came and you did it in one shot, right, it's not considered chatness. So this they learn from the word yachdav. So from there we learn that the Yisul of only tzemen of Pishtim is only when it's going to be mechubarim yachad yafeh, when it's done properly. And it's not considered, right, chibur yafeh if it's less than two tchivot. Right? So you see from here, right, that the word yachdav is teaching us something. It's teaching us how to be over on the Yisur of Tzemru Fishim. So again, one more time, if Yachdav is not extra, but it's coming to teach you something, again, what? It's not Mufne. If it's not Mufne, I cannot learn. Says Doche, lo ta'ase. So says the Gemara, no. In Ken, if so, Lich Tov Rachmana, lo tilbash Tzemru Fishim. You didn't have to say, lo tilbash Sha'anez Tzemru Fishim. You could have just said, lo tilbash Tzemru Fishim. What is Sha'nez Lamali? Why did I need the word Sha'nez? I needed Sha'nez to be extra. Since it's extra, 
As I just said, no tilbash, seven of fifteen. Why not? That's shatnez. That's kilaim, whatever you want to call it. But the fact that I had shatnez and shatnez, etc., that's why I have it. So the Akati says the Gemara, it's also incorrect. Why? Akati I need the word shatnez. Why do I need the word shatnez to teach you that there's no issue of putting on seven of fifteen? Ad shua tavui venuz. Shatnez is an acronym. Shaat Nez, Nuz, right? That's the Nez, right? Which means you need that to be Mukhlak, right? Shua is Chalak, right? And in Chot Isur uh, Veter, uh, we learn something which is Chalak. So the blood just spills by. It's called Shua. Yeah, Shua, okay? Which is Mukhlak, which is like combed. Tavui, the Arug, right? That's what, it, that's what Nuz is, Arug. So it comes over here and it's saying, by the way, they learn it, because of uh, Unkelos. Unkelos on the Torah, when, when Esav Rasha comes and says that, uh, sorry, when it says that uh, he's a hairy person, and Vanoshi, Vanoshi is chalak, and Yaakov Binu says, I'm right, I mean, he's big. So he says, I know, I'm a, a ish chalak, translates to Unkelos, Gever Sheia, a person that's chalak. So Shua is chalak, right? Smooth. Okay, so that's a, another one, Ish Saeed, right? My brother Esav is a Ish Saeed. Vanoshi is chalak, I'm a giver Shia. So here, Shua is Chalak, Tavui Garu. So therefore, Sha'nez is a Notrikon. Notrikon is an acronym. Okay, so therefore he comes and he says, I need the word Sha'nez. So again, if I need the word Sha'nez, it's not Mufne. If it's not Mufne, I cannot learn, right? Ases Doche Lotase. So says the Gimra, Ella Kula Sha'nez Nafka. What does that mean? The entire Dirasha is from the word Sha'nez. That means besides the fact that Sha'nez okay. is extra, right, according to the Pasuk, and therefore we could actually do this Dirasha, he says also you could do an acronym. Meaning like this. You could do two, two in one. You could do the acronym, which is Shua uh, Tavui Venez, and you could also do the actual word that it's extra. So therefore, since the actual word is also extra, so therefore you could do a two for one. Ashkechan de ati ase vedachi lota ase greida. Says the Gimara, we just found that ase is going to push off a lota ase. What about a lota ase sheesh bo karet? Hech ashkechan de dachi. Right? De itzrich aleha le meisra. Which means like this. If you remember, we are always talking about, we have a few general rules. Ase doche lota ase. Right? A positive pushes off a negative. Ase cannot push off an ase ve lota ase. So a positive cannot push off something that has a positive and a negative. Next, where do you learn that a positive could push off a negative that has karet? Because until now, we learned that a positive could push off a negative. But where do you see that a positive could push off a negative that has a karet? A negative that has a karet. Lotase. So for example, all the arayot. All the arayot, it was either going to have sekila, the only one that was sekila was the kalato. Right? You had the serefa, right? Which was all the other ones, right? And then you had also karet. karet. So you had three right. different choices. So how do you know, right, that a positive commandment of Ibum would push off a negative commandment of, right, of the karet? If it's going to push off a regular negative commandment that does not have karet, okay, fine. I understand. If a person push, puts on shanez, he gets karet. So it's anyone who gets karet, right? So it doesn't, but here's karet. And therefore, we needed the pasuk, aleha. Remember, because we had to learn from Yevama Yavo aleha to prohibit it. That even if it's going to be vimkom mitzvah, you still don't do yibu. Why do you need aleha? Why do you need a pasuk even? Where in the world did you see that a positive commandment could push off a negative commandment? That's correct. Positive to push off a negative commandment, we just learned it. Tzitzit. Tzitzit and shanez. Where do we learn that a positive could push off an anger command that has karet? Now, right? Maybe we're going to learn it from the mitzvah of Brit Milah. Right? Why? The mitzvah of Brit Milah is going to push off a lota ase of milachan Shabbat, even though it's karet, which means like this. Remember, if a person comes and he's Michalel Shabbat and he has edim and hatra'a, witnesses, and he's got a warning, what does he get? Sekilah. If a person does not have Either witnesses or warning. 
right? Let's say he had witnesses, but he didn't have warning, or he had a warning, but he didn't have witnesses, and he does a bemezid. What does he get? Karet. If he does a bishogeg, meaning that he didn't know it was Shabbat, or he didn't know that this was a sur, what does he get? Khatat. He's obligated to bring a Quran Khatat. Okay, but remember, of course, it says, Zedono Karet, Shigoto Khatat. What? Yes. Okay? So therefore, what happens now? He says, what do you do on, on, on Shabbat? All of a sudden, there's a Milah Bizmano, and you have to do Brit Milah. One second. Brit Milah is a Milah. You're not allowed to do a Milah. You're not allowed to take out what you're doing in Chabura. You're not allowed to do a Milah. But that's pushing off the part. What's going on? The positive commandment of Milah is pushing off the negative commandment of Shabbat. So he says, mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Mal le mila sheken nichretu alea shlosh esre britot. Brit mila is something special. It's a mitzvah that you have 13 brits, 13 times the Kosh Baruch Hu mentioned the, the concept of brit, right? By brit mila. So because of that, it's not written by any other mitzvah like that. So therefore, I can never apply what I learned by brit mila to anything else. I can't say, you listen, since by a brit mila, which is a positive commandment, which is pushing off a negative commandment of karet, because remember, you do melech on Shabbat, it's karet. So the positive commandment of milah pushes off a negative commandment of karet. I cannot learn that for anything else because brit is special. Brit, you have 13 times that it's mentioned. And how many times right? is Shabbat? Okay, fine. You're right. So maybe now we can learn it from Pesach. Why can we learn it from Pesach? Because it says, mal Pesach sheken karet. Right? And mashen ken shar So which means like this. We find, if you remember, we said that there was only two positive commandments, that by the positive commandments that have karet, usually a positive commandment does not have a karet, right? If you don't do a positive commandment, you're mevatel mitzvah taseh, but you don't have karet, the only two mitzvot that have a karet is Pesach and Milah. So if a person does not bring a korban Pesach for no reason, karet. If a person does not, right, do bring Milah to a son, karet, or even to himself once he gets old enough, okay? So the Gemara says, why don't we learn it from the Korban Pesach? The mitzvah of the Shkita of Pesach on the 14th of Nisan is the doche, the lota semlacha on Shabbat, even though it's anush karet, which means you bring a Korban Pesach on Shabbat. This year it doesn't happen because this year Pesach is on Friday night. So you would do it on Friday, right? But let's say it was uh, two years ago, I think it was, no? Two years ago there was Motzeh Shabbat. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's, I think it was two years ago. So two years ago, Motzeh Shabbat was Pesach. So if it was Pesach on Motzeh Shabbat, when do you bring the Korban? You bring the Korban on Shabbat itself. And one second. You're bringing a Korban on Shabbat. Okay. It's a lot ase. So it's, it, the, the mitzvah ase of Korban Pesach is pushing off the lot ase of, of, uh, of doing melacha on Shabbat. So answers the Gemara, right? He comes and he says... Right? So, sorry, sorry, sorry. This mm-hmm. is the Dichui. So, ah, you wanted to learn it from Pesach. Answers the Gimra, Male Pesach Sheken Karet. Also by Pesach, it's also Karet. Right? So, therefore, it's in which technically we could have also answered by the, the Brit Mila, right? But, right, we didn't want to do that. It says over here, Mikol Mitzvot Aseh Shabbat Torah, Lo Neemar Chiyuv Karet, Ela Bitulan Shel Shtayim. Mila Vekorban Pesach. Okay? So, he says... Um, ah, Re'ele Kamane Ara 21, why did we only ask for Mila that we said the Shosh Sebitot, Velo Mikoch Shish Ba Onesh Karet Gamken, just like by the Korban Pesach. So he says, ah, you want to learn from Pesach, Pesach has Karet. So what about from the Tamid then? Right, Mi Tamid. What do you mean from the, the Korban Tamid? We have a mitzvah bringing it, and the Korban Tamid is Tamid. What does it mean Tamid? Tamid. It's always. Always even on Shabbat. So even on Shabbat, you bring the Korban Tamid. How many, what is the Tamid? What is the Korban Tamid? Good. What is it? I didn't say what you bring. What is it? You bring what? what one mean? Korban a day? One Korban a day? Uh, uh, what do you mean? Uh, no, book. So that's... Exactly. Yeah, Tamid, oh, tamid right. Shal Shachar and Tamid Shal Ben Arbaim. Very good. So you have the, the Shnei Tamidim. Yeah, the Ola Tamid. So it's going to be the Tamid Shal Shachar and Tamid Shal Erev, right? Ben Arbaim. So says the Gemara, Mal tamid sheken tadid. He says, no, you can't bring a proof. Why? Because the, the, the tamid is every single day. So that's different than any other mitzvah taseh. So since it's going to be different than any other type of mitzvah taseh, you can bring me now that a mitzvah taseh, which is not tadid, is going to push off the karet. 
It's only since it's Tadir, so it's going to push off a, a negative commandment that has that, that is correct. Fine. Okay. Mm. So says the Gemara, fine. From all these different cases, Mechada mm. Loatia, you're right. I cannot bring it from one of them. Okay. But Teiti Mitarte, why don't I bring it from both of them, from two of them? Which means like this each one of these cases that we brought on its own, we, we did not succeed. We tried Mila, we pushed it off. So we tried Pesach. We tried Tamid, it's Tamid. So fine, so I tried three three strikes and you're out. But I cannot learn it by itself. But maybe I could group them together. And by grouping two of them together, now I can learn it out. So says the Gemara, from which two are you going to come and bring it? Mimila Pesach He says, one second, you want to group together Mila and Pesach, that you see that there's a positive commandment also by Mila. Positive commandment also by Pesach, and it pushes off what? What does it push off? It pushes off the, the Shabbat, which is going to be a negative commandment, which has karet. So says the Gimana, right? One second, Sheken karet. It's got karet, both of them. So you can't bring Mila and Pesach. Maybe from Pesach and Tamid, I'm going to be put the Korban Pesach and the Korban Tamid, right? That again, the Korban Pesach right, pushes off Shabbat and it has karet. The Tamid doesn't have karet, but it also pushes off Shabbat. So he says, Sheken Tzorach Gavua. Yeah, they have a uh, common denominator, which the common denominator is, it's for a korban for a kalosh But I can't use that for any other mitzvah. For example, Yibum. Yibum is not for a kalosh So therefore, I cannot put together Pesach and uh, the Tamid to come to teach you a general rule that any positive commandment will also push off a negative commandment that has karet. So he says, so okay, Maybe Mila Tamid. Uh, korban Mila and the Korban Tamid. He says, Sheken Yeshno Lifnea Dibur, right? Both of these mitzvot happen before Matan Torah. The majority of the other mitzvot happen only after Matan Torah, right? For example, uh, for example, even Ibum. It says, even though they did do the Ibum before Matan Torah, like we found by Yehuda, but there was no Sibui for it. So he says, but Mila and the Korban Tamid. There was a tzibui beforehand. Because there's one mandamar that says that the Bnei Yisrael, when they brought the Korban Ola, when it says the Yalu Olot, this was before, right? This is when they were camping by Har Sinai. It was even before Matan Torah. So according to this mandamar, Korban Tamid preceded the Torah. The Brit Mila preceded the Torah. So I cannot come and teach you something which preceded the Torah to something which is going to be after Matan Torah. Because he boom, even though they applied it before Matan Torah, but the command was not until after Matan Torah. So says the Gemara, fine. Nami, and even all three, Sheken Yeshen Dibur. Technically, all three of them was before Matan Torah. Because also the Korban Pes, everything was Matan Torah. So therefore, we cannot learn from these mitzvot that push off Shabbat, because again, they were all like that. So says the Gemara, fine. So there we have to find out another way then. We couldn't learn from Mila by itself. We couldn't learn from Pesach by itself. We couldn't learn from, from, uh, from uh, Tamim by itself. Even from two, 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 nothing. So what? But we still need it. Why do we need to learn a Yibum? There's no Yibum by Yisurerba. I would have thought to say, that we're going to learn it from the Mitzvah of Kibud Avaim, that Mitzvah Ase is going to push off a negative commandment that has Karet. The Tanya, as we learned in a Baraita, right? We learned in a Baraita. So says the Gemara, Salka I would have thought to say, Tete mi kubadavem, you learn from the Kibud of Em. The Tanya, as we learned in a Baraita, Yachol ye Kibud of Em doche et Shabbat. I would have thought to say that maybe Kibud of Em pushes off the Shabbat. That means if your father or mother ask you to do something on Surah Shabbat, you're commanded to listen to them. Tamlomar comes teach you, Ishimo vaviv tira ovet Shabbat vaiti shmonu, which means, Kulchem chayavim ichodi. Everybody is, is chayav in the kavod of a kavod baruch even your mother and your father. So therefore, since your mother and your father are also chayav in my kavod, so therefore, the kibud of Ayim does not supersede, it does not surpass the concept of a kavod baruch of Shabbat or anything else. Mm-hmm. So says the Gemara now, right? So now, how do we learn from here? My love, are we not talking about the Amarle that he tells the son, shechotli or basheli? Are we not talking about that he comes and he tells the son, do for me shechita or cook for me? The tama and the reasoning why that it doesn't push it off, is with the Ketav Rachman, if it wasn't written in the Torah, 
Dache, it would have pushed it off. So you see from here that Kibud Avayim, which is a positive commandment, pushes off a Melachan Shabbat, which is a negative commandment, which has Kareh. If it wasn't for the fact that the Torah had to write, right? Because if it wasn't written Mefurash, right after Kibud Avayim, I would have pushed it off. So he comes and he says, so therefore that's a Raya, that if it wasn't going to be taught such an Inyan, so says the Gemara, no, that wasn't a pshat that he's telling him to do. We were talking about the love, the negative commandment of Mechamed. What is Mechamed? He's working the animal. And this is, a, it's an Isur Lota said that does not have karet. So it's a Mechalel Shabbat, but there's no karet by it. As it says over here, Hamavid Behema. If somebody's going to work an animal and he causes it to do a melacha on Shabbat, for example, mechamer, which means he's making a walk afterwards or whatever it is, he's over. Mechamer, mechamer. Mechamer, yeah, with a resh. He comes and he comes and he takes the animal, right? Yes, with a chamor, he's directing it. So he's doing it a melacha. He's over. It's written that you cannot do melacha on Shabbat, not you, nor your animal. So a person's chayav al shvitat bemto be Shabbat, not shvitat kelim. Shvidat kelim is machlok betilel bet shamay. We pass in betilel. A person en en adam mechuyav shvidat kelav be shabbat. The shvidat beimto is a Torah mikureshet. The Torah says your animal cannot work on Shabbat. Ulam, however, though, not like the other melachot of Shabbat, there's no karet because from the psukim we learn that there's no onish karet only if a person does it with his own body. But if a person's animal does a melachot on Shabbat, there's no karet. So he's over on a lot in the Torah. There's no karet. So therefore, according to that, I cannot bring a proof from Kibud Avayim. Beforehand, if I wanted to say that Kibud Avayim pushes off, I had a Havamin, that it pushes off a Doraita, a Lav, Sheyesh, Mokaret, Shabbat, was only going to be if Basheli or Shechotli. Do me Shechita, or do this there, this Karet, and therefore I needed a Pasuk to teach you no. But now that I'm coming and I'm telling you no, that it's a Lav of Mechamed, and therefore there's no Karet, I cannot bring you a proof that a Naseh is Doche Alota Aseh Shabbat Torah that has Karet. Because even there, to do with the Mechalel Shabbat, there was no karet by the love of Mechamel. So if I can bring you a proof from over there, and then I can, and we'll continue with Zerat Hashem of bringing different proofs.